So the video that you see circulating on your screen is of the DPP and our friends partying the night away. As if there is no thoughts of tomorrow, partying like it is 1999. Now a lot of persons out there, including bloggers, including Virus Cartel, including Jamaica and a whole, they are wondering and pondering why the DPP must be stressed out right now because she don't know if she has a job. She don't know if she's forced into retirement. But people, this video proves that the DPP knows that there's nothing to worry about. In the song that is playing, ironically, it says, we are not going home until the party done, until tomorrow. So therefore, the DPP knows the system gets, the system does what the system want to do. And anybody else that is objecting to the system should have learned a long time ago that the system is for its own. The system can adjust. The system can amend. So therefore, while we are out here and worrying about the DPP, she knows that her friends in high places is going to make whatever correction, whatever amendment is needed to be done. So therefore, she can take up her position as if she is put there for a reason. There is a purpose, a method to the madness. Point blank and period. So the next thing that is popping in the news is of a Jamaican teen living in the United States, in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia to be specific. That lost his life very tragically. Now people like them say, it is all fun and games until somebody gets hurt or until somebody loses their life. Such is the case in this case. Based upon the information, it is said that the son was at his home in other nights when he heard a couple of youths outside, three of them that attends the same high school that he does. They are all a part of the football team. Now it seems as if there was some sort of initiation, some sort of racial ish going on. It is said that this youth, when he came outside, he was chased by these three young youths, all W-H-I-T-E. He was run down and then he managed to get back into the house. However, when he got back in the house, he was panting for breath. He would eventually lose his life because based on the medical condition, he has some sorts of sickle cell. So therefore, he called his father soon after the event happened and he told his father that he could not breathe. Soon later, he would lose his life at the hospital. Now the poor poor is probing. Based on the information, what makes this very disturbing is the fact that it is said that the persons that were chasing him, they were hurling all sorts of R-A-C-I-A-L stuff. So therefore, they might call him all sorts of eager ish like that. Now people, being somebody that left, lived in America a couple of decades ago when it was real bad, talking about the Rodney Ing kind of ish, talking about all sorts of stuff. It was worse in the 60s. However, when I went to America, it was pretty bad. Now it has gotten better because people are talking about B-L-A-C-K lives, Matarete, Lele, Blue, Blah, Bling. But like they say, the more that things change is the more that they remain the same. So therefore, nothing really has changed, even though it has changed. Based on what the father said, Mr. Johnson, this youth only moved to the United States maybe about two years ago from Jamaica. He was supposed to celebrate his birthday, 17th birthday today, which is Tuesday. So therefore, he lost his life a couple of days before celebrating his birthday. So what should have been some sort of celebration is now joy leads to tragedy. People like me say, don't know what is going to happen because of the age of these youths. Don't know if they are going to be blamed or charged for any sorts of HOMO side, whatever the case is, or M A N S L A U G H T E R. I would bet because of their R A C E, because of their age, because they did not initially think that this youth was going to D I E, they are probably going to get some sorts of slap on the wrist. 
two or a couple of years from now, they are going to be out. Their life is going to continue as if nothing happened. But on the polar opposite side of things, this family that left from Jamaica brought up their son two years ago, doing very well for themselves, living in the suburbs in the United States. They lost their son prematurely. Before his time was up, people, it just tells you, tragedy, it does not matter your economic status. It does not matter where you are. Whenever problem and trouble haunts you, there are all sorts of demonic force running around, whether America or Jamaica, people. This is a sad state of affair. Hopefully, this family will get some sorts of justice. However, people, even with the worst justice or the best justice, it is not going to bring back their son. They will have to live with this for the rest of their natural life. Point blank and period. Now, the next thing that is popping in the news, there's a popular saying in Jamaica, it goes something like this. He that exalted himself shall be a beast. I am speaking about a taxi operator. His name is Peter Bramwell. He is 37 year old. A video that is making its round, as a matter of fact, three videos in which there is some sorts of road R-A-G-E, some sorts of contention verbal turn physical between the taxi driver of a pro box and then a man that was driving a Pajero. So therefore a riffraff versus a decent person. In this video you could see the taxi driver, the pro box driver, A T T A C K I N G this man take some sorts of big stick or big stone and lick out the man glass, trying to lick the man in face while the man was in his vehicle along with a lady. That lady was screaming on top of her lungs. The lady eventually ran out the vehicle. I am assuming did not see her, only heard the noise. The man eventually ran through the next side of the, the passenger side and take for himself. The taxi driver could be seen with some sorts of sharp machete, trying to run down, trying to limb up the man. However, he was prevented from doing so by people that were there and kind of calm him down. Now, people, the facts are these. If you're in Jamaica and you're driving a motor vehicle, you should have legal insurance. Your paperwork, your documentation are supposed to be straight. So therefore, if you have a problem with a motorist, whether you are wrong or whether that person is wrong, you should take it through the regular procedures. Make the insurance, call the popo, make them deal with it. Based on the information that is out there, this is the polar opposite of both persons, meaning Mr. Bramwell and the next person. Mr. Bramwell is said to be one of those operators that operate some sorts of illegal taxi. He was charged for that offense. Based on the information, it is said that this man, Mr. Bramwell, already has four traffic warrants. This man has all sorts of traffic infraction from A to Z. Based on what the Popo is saying, they are going to issue at least 40 more warrants on top of the warrants that he already have. He has at least 60 outstanding tickets also. Based on the next man, the Pajero driver, the man that was rushed, the man that was A-S-S-A-U-L-T-E-D, verbally and physically. This man has zero ticket. This man's driving record is clean. This man almost lost his life had it not been purses, better heads prevail and kind of calm down Mr. Bramwell. Needless to say, Mr. Bramwell was locked up. He is presently in a poor, poor lockup. Like I said, he has a whole bunch of tickets out there. So we have to ask the question, how is it that a man that has four warrants, has 60 outstanding tickets, 40 more warrants to be served, how does a man like that operate taxi illegally for a couple of years and people? The answer is straightforward. Because of the licky lickyism, because of the bribery that exists on the road of Jamaica, these people are allowed to do the same thing over and over. And like I said, that is insanity. Money is always the motive. So therefore, motorists that are obeying the rules and laws, traffic stuff, 
their lives is in danger. They could lose their life. They could get injured, as a matter of fact. Based on the recent history and records that is out there, over 400 to 500 people every year. Most of these persons that are infracting the law, they are repeat offenders. Such is the case as Mr. Peter Bramwell, dangerous man operating as some sorts of taxi operator. Should not happen. Point blank and period. Yo. <laughs> Oh, I swear, them, them pre-mix truck money are history, them, you know? Just look at this. Chuck head fuck up, you know? Driver must either jump out, out of it, or in serious injury. What me just a pass on the highway, and I come and buck up on it. I mean, I say, it never really surprised me, you know? Because them man a drive hard on the road, you know? I even a turn up chang there on your ass clad off of the road. Yeah. So I go on. Far over the other side of the road, you see them? Come straight over here. Yeah. Now, the video that you just saw is of an incident, accident that occurred in Montego Bay, St. James. Like you say, that is what they call a premix truck that was obviously blazing, speeding. Don't know if somebody cut him off or he, or he just fell asleep. Don't know the circumstance that led to him overturning, flipping the vehicle. Don't know his condition as we speak. When we see stuff like this, we have to ask the question, hold on a minute. It seems as if the devil depends on some sort of world tour in a Jamaica. It seems as if a lot of these drivers must be on C-R-A-C-K. They must smoke some sort of weed in a lizard tail season spliff. Because when we look at their actions, when we look at their deeds... And the fact that they are driving these big vehicles. Just imagine the amount of damage that could have happened. How many other persons could have lost their life. Based on the fact that this man was on the opposite side of the road. Jump over the median or drive over the median. End up on the opposite side. Flip and turn over. What could have been going on in his life? What could have caused this? People like me say. These people, whether a 18 wheeler, trailer, whether a premix truck, whether a construction truck, whatever, them drive their vehicle as if they have some sorts of sports car. And people, I am not justifying the people that are driving these Mark X or the BMW or the Benz or whatever. But me just I say, you cannot be jetting in a some sorts of 18 wheeler, trailer, premix trucks as if you have some sorts of vehicle that can control the road. Anything can happen, and this is exactly what happened. Now, people, I am not a sympathizer for somebody that is driving on the road doing all sorts of infraction, endangering persons' life and health. So, therefore, if you lose your life, happy redance, condolences to your family. But whenever you are endang endangering other persons' life, whatever you get at that, if you take, you deserve it. Point blank and period. Right, no, 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 fuck is he got it? No, 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 Yeah, I just passed me this one. Now, the next thing that is popping in the news, the voice that you heard is of a victim. A victim that is a part of the JCF, as a matter of fact, he was just transferred to the SWAT team. His name is Constable Simeon Kelson. Based on the information, it is said that he had a bad A-C-C-I-D-E-N-T. He ran into a premix truck, just recently spoke about a premix truck. Don't know if it was that same premix truck. Don't have any information to verify or validate it. Based on the information, it is said that this occurred at the intersection of Barrett Town by St. James people. We don't know where that is. It is said that this constable 
is in critical condition. People, based on the balling, based on the condition of the vehicle, pretty much half of the vehicle from the driver's door, it peeled back like some sorts of sardine can. He was seen and heard balling upon the ground. He was in immense pain. People, if this man live, call him grace because it would have been amazing. People, at the end of the day, the roads have no sorts of respect. If you are speeding, it does not matter if you are popo, if you are civilian. Once you violate that road, once you are going at a not speed and lick up in a something, it is not going to have any sort of regards if you are a part of the JCF or you are just a regular Joe or Jane. It no matter. Once you do the wrong thing, then the wrong thing more than likely is going to do you. Now, people, this is my disclaimer before I proceed. Don't know if he was bad drive. Don't know the circumstance that led to him. Don't know if that truck that I spoke about, that premix truck before, because that incident also occurred in a St. James. Two of them might be related. Not sure. As soon as I get some more pertinent information, I'll be sure to divulge ASAP. So anyways, people, thanks once again for checking out my video. If you appreciate videos like these, please show your appreciation by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to my channel. That is how YouTube promotes videos like these to like-minded, sensible persons like yourself. And last but not least, please subscribe to my next channel. It is called Jamaica Dancehall Source. I'll be pinning the link to that channel in the description of this video. Bless up.